Our poll question today is, what do you think of the firing of the East Texas firefighter who posted a Facebook comment in support of the Charleston shooter? Did he deserve to be fired? Is it a violation of his First Amendment free speech rights? Or do you think the firefighter should sue? That firefighter who was fired because of his Facebook comment says the post was taken out of context. But either way, it sparks a discussion on what is safe to post on Facebook. Can we legally be fired for Facebook posts on our private page? Abbas Kazaronian is a law professor and an attorney, and he's here today to help clear up all of this confusion. Abbas, welcome to America Trends. Good to have you. Hi, how are you? Thanks for having me. Well, thank you. Uh, can this firefighter really be fired for a Facebook post on his private page? I think uh, this actually raises uh, a lot of uh, very interesting questions. Um, but quite frankly, from what we know right now, I cannot answer that. We don't have enough facts. What we do know is that um, Texas is a, is a at-will uh, state, but um, within the governmental realm, not in the private sector, there is, a, there is a heightened standard as it applies to the government entity when firing somebody. But um, what, what so, is so kind just, of... just to back up, I'm sorry, an at-will state, you're meaning fire at will, and that means that the employer, the law tends to err on the side of the employer in these sorts of situations, if I'm interpreting the law right, because I'm certainly not a lawyer. Is that correct? No, I'm glad you clarified that. Yes, I mean, as it happens, California is one of those as well. You don't need a reason to fire somebody. But as it happens here, they have actually uh, pointed to the reason why they did fire them. And they're saying it's because of the Facebook. What we don't know is whether this uh, specific uh, individual was given his rights, whether he had a union rep there, whether he had an attorney. And when you're giving somebody a reason for firing them, I think it's important to give him due process. Um, I'm not sure um, if this individual was given, um, you know, his fair right and given an opportunity to be heard and have his side of, you know, you know his events heard to, in order to be judged. And when you're pointing to a reason as why somebody is being uh, uh, fired, I think the uh, I, I think that uh, that creates an additional problem. I think this person, this individual, should get an attorney. And uh, I think those facts have to be um, laid out on the table before you know anyone can comment on whether it was, you know, fair to fire them or not. But if you take the uh, fireman's uh, um, account of what actually happened, I think that it's um, you know obviously unfair because there were allegedly further posts that he was commenting on. We don't know what was above what he wrote, and that evidence needs to come out. Okay, now this was a firefighting job, so it was in the public sector. Can you be fired from a government job for expressing your opinion sooner than, for example, from a, a private corporation? Um, you know, you do have protections under the First Amendment, but you've got to do some kind of analysis here. You have to see what position this individual holds, how he is perceived in the public, and of course, the more public that your figure is, the less protection you have because you are you have more influence and so you can never um, take the first amendment for granted but it is a massive massive protection that everyone is given and protected by and I don't think that you can just fire somebody for expressing their opinion but you know you have to weigh that weigh that up against what position they hold and how it's uh, and how it affects the public and the position that they hold and I mean if the mayor had said something like that and um, you know, you took all the other factors out of it, then of course, you know, I'm not sure how much protection that they get uh, in that situation. You have to see what they are um, commenting on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if, if it is an out and out racist remark, uh, I'm not sure that I would have much sympathy and I'm not sure how much, how much protection they would get under the First Amendment. It's, uh, it, it's a very, very difficult situation and the balancing act um, and requires all the facts. I cannot say whether he's given the protection because under First Amendment analysis, you need to balance out certain, certain issues. And so uh, I guess if you're giving advice to people that are on social media, uh, don't friend your boss, uh, have a private page and a public page, have two private pages and friend your work friends on that one and don't friend your friend. I mean, what, what is the best advice? Because this these legal realms are largely uncharted at this point. We're kind of watching all this happen in real time as we're all participating in social media. And while social media can be great personal street cred and even, even really a form of, uh, of currency these days, um, at the same time, 
people need to take some precautions if they're going to post things that are risky. For example, just the, the, the post that, that we showed on this show tonight with the man from CNN holding up a sign that said the N-word on it that he said out loud and, and also playing the tape, uh, the video of Obama uh, saying the N-word out loud. Those played on my show. If someone were to show a segment on their social media, their boss saw it. I mean, you see where this goes. We don't really know the intricacies yet. It, it is going to be state by state, no doubt. But how do you advise people to just keep their nose clean in this? I mean, you have to take a common sense approach to everything. Uh, obviously, we live in a, in a world where social, social media dominates our, our lives, you know, be it Twitter, Facebook, uh, whatever it may be. And you have to understand that the position you hold in society and, and who is, has access to your uh, social media. Now, if you're in a public position, you're even a position of responsibility, be it a professor, be it a teacher, be it a t television personality. Mm -hmm. You have to understand that people follow you and look to you and, and they're going to comment on and judge you on what you say. And not always the context of your conversation and your comments are going to be taken into consideration. People are very quick to jump to conclusions. And this particular case with this particular individual, with you know, the firefighter that was fired in Texas, may be one of those situations. We don't know all the facts. So you have to take a common sense approach and be careful who you avail yourself to because you may be saying something very innocent, but out of context, it may be taken in a very, very derogatory way, and your reputation, you, you, I mean, you can't unring the bell. If someone's yeah. reputation is harmed, you can't go back on that, even though you may be innocent, even though you didn't mean it in a racial way, you will be tarred by that. And, and so you have to be very, very cautious in who you email, what you email, what you put on social media, because unfortunately, that is the world that we live in right now. Yeah, and, and I wouldn't personally advise going and unfriending your boss if you're already friends with them. That would be a bad idea. Raise a little suspicion. Uh, real quickly, Abbas, I know you're always working on your next cool, high-profile case. Tell us what you're working on right now. Well, recently we actually sued the, uh, the website Grindr uh, on, on, a, on a class action level uh, for, um, on behalf of all the people that use it in California because we believe that they're... Uh, contracts are illegal and we were looking for restitution to get all the money paid for the subscriptions to Grindr in the last four years. All right. Well, we'll be stayed, staying tuned to hear the results of that. Thanks so much for being with us, Abbas.